So this is my acoustic guitar. It's a bourgeois slope D and I bought it used about 10 years ago. Back in 2012 when I purchased it, it was about 3,700 bucks. In fact, I paid 3,750 shipped from the original owner, a guy up in Maine. And it's an incredible acoustic. I've used it on sessions, I've taken it on tour and I've used it quite a bit on this channel. But a few weeks ago, Eastman, sent me this guitar. Now, like the Bourgeois, it's a slope shouldered dreadnought. It has a similar construction, it has similar woods, but this guitar is made in China. Still handmade, just made overseas, and it's less than half of the retail cost of the Bourgeois. So how do they stack up against one another? American versus Chinese. We're gonna try it out and see in today's video. Now I should point out Eastman did send me this guitar free of charge as well as a few others, but this video is not sponsored by Eastman in any other way. They don't know this video is getting made. They're not gonna see this video before it goes live and all of the opinions and thoughts in this video are my own. Also, before we move on, a quick plug for my brand new video course, the Cowboy Chord Breakout Course. This is a mini course about an hour long. This is designed to be taken in one to two sittings. And if you are an acoustic guitar player or a rhythm electric player that's stuck playing the same cowboy chord voicings that we all learn when we first pick up a guitar and you wanna break out to more interesting chord voicings as well as understanding how to get up and down the neck, this course is for you. And we're still doing special pre-order pricing. The course will never be this discounted ever again if you want more information on that as well as the other video courses on my website. You can find that linked down below. So with all that out of the way, let's get these guitars under a microphone and see what they really sound like. Okay, let's talk body shape for a second. This guitar and the Eastman are both what are called slope shouldered dreadnoughts. And these are based off of the Gibson J45. Now the J45 is sort of Gibson's modified version of like the Martin D18 or D28, which is a traditional dreadnought shape. Now the dreadnought shape is really great for people who are heavy handed strummers or people that need a guitar with a lot of volume. Bluegrass players, for example. Uh, the traditional dreadnought is incredibly popular in the bluegrass flat picking community because it has enough volume and enough power to get over other instruments in a bluegrass ensemble like the banjo, for example. And it also stands up to heavy strumming. What I mean by that is bigger guitar shapes with wider lower bouts here and just bigger bodies overall stand up better to heavier strumming. I myself am a pretty heavy handed guitar player, both with acoustic and electric, but where the slope shoulder dreadnought differs from the traditional dreadnought is having a little bit narrower shoulders up here. And this has a slight effect on the response of the guitar. In my mind, it makes it a little bit more versatile. When I was looking for a guitar 10 years ago, I settled on this shape because I needed one guitar that would do everything. It would stand up to my heavy handed strumming, without collapsing or getting too compressed, but it was also responsive enough and sensitive enough to be able to pull off 
finger style play on certain sessions. And this shape, the slope shoulder dread, works perfectly for me because of that. It's sort of a jack of all trades guitar. It's not the best finger style, it's not the best flat picker, but it does both really, really well. Now compare something like this, a bigger bodied slope shoulder dread to a much smaller bodied triple O. This is another Eastman, this is the E20 double O SS. And you'll hear that this guitar and the other Eastman both hold up to strumming much better than this guitar. But when it comes to finger style playing, this guitar is much more responsive, it's much more sensitive to more detailed, lighter playing. So this is the Eastman E20 SS varnish series. This is the antique varnish series, which is somewhat unique in that this isn't like a sprayed on lacquer like you get with most acoustic guitars. This is actually a hand rubbed varnish finish similar to what they use on their violins and cellos and violas. Uh, it has an interesting feel to it. It does feel a bit like lacquer, uh, and they've got some sort of aging happening here. Now, I haven't compared this to one of the non-varnish series, so I don't know how the finish itself affects the sound, uh, but both this and the triple O, I think, sound really, really good. And they sound really good under a microphone, which is a huge test for an acoustic instrument. Uh, some acoustics, can sound great in the room, they can sound great when they're sitting on your lap, but it's one thing to hear a guitar sitting above it, sitting above the sound hole, versus sitting in front of a mic like this U87 here, which is what I'm listening to right now. When you're sitting in front of a microphone, you're essentially putting that guitar under a microscope. Every little nuance, every little detail of the guitar comes out. sort of the whole frequency response of the guitar. Now we compare that to my Bourgeois, which if I bought this guitar today retail, I think would be around $5,000, 5,500 bucks. That Eastman is around 18, $1,900, depending on where you pick it up. But this, this has a similar sound, a similar feel. say my bourgeois is easier to play but that's because i've had it set up i've actually had this guitar plucked over at righteous guitars uh, so this guitar is set up for me how i like to play it the eastman is directly out of the box uh, so the action's a little bit high for my taste it could use a setup to my ears right now in front of the microphone the bourgeois is a little bit more balanced the eastman has more low end it's a little more boomy in the bottom end and i should point out that we did put on the exact same set of strings right before filming this video so they have the same strings brand new the low end the mid-range and the top end are all present there's not one area of the frequencies that are sticking out more than the other Whereas the Eastman is definitely a more low-end heavy guitar. So overall, my thoughts on the Eastman. Well, 
for the price, I don't know that you're going to find a better, more well-rounded guitar than this. Uh, first of all, the materials that this is made of, solid rosewood back and sides, Sitka spruce top, an ebony fingerboard. Can I help you? Can I wrap this video up first and then we can play? And then the hand rubbed varnish finish, I think is actually a really cool look. Now, if you want something that's super historically accurate and a really accurate relic job, this is not it. And there are a few fit and finish things I've noticed with this guitar, uh, just some details that have been overlooked. Details that in a more high-end, more expensive guitar are not overlooked. Now, do those have a huge effect on the sound? Some do and some don't. And to be fair, I haven't actually you know, taken a mirror or a scope and looked inside this guitar at the quality of the bracing or the quality of the glue. That is something that you're getting with a more high-end, uh, acoustic guitar like this. You're paying for that attention to detail. Now in terms of sheer tone, uh, I actually do prefer My Bourgeois over the Eastman. I like the more balanced response. This guitar is going to record a little better, which is how I play acoustic. For me, acoustic guitar is more of a tool than something that I sit down to play for fun. I'm recording acoustic, I'm using acoustic to get a part down, and for my uses, this Bourgeois still ticks the box. But at less than half the price, this thing is really, really hard to beat. And this, I think, leads to a bigger conversation that seems to be happening in the guitar community right now, where manufacturers are moving more of production overseas. Fender moving more of their production to Mexico, and then companies like Eastman that have always been based in China. It leads to this question of, does that really even matter anymore? Is the quality from a company like Eastman that much different than something of an equivalent price point that you would get here in the United States? I'm not sure that it really matters as much anymore. If the guitar plays well and it sounds great and it looks good and it makes you excited to play it, it doesn't matter who built it, where it was built, how much money you spent on it or what it says on the headstock. If it sounds good, it is good. And more importantly, if it's something that makes you excited to play, if you can't walk past it in the room without picking it up to play it, then it's the right guitar for you. And it doesn't matter what it is or where it's from or how much money you spent on it. So overall, there's a few fit and finish issues. There's a few warts here and there, but for the money, the guitar sounds incredible. It needs a setup, but it plays really well. And it absolutely does compete with something that's more than twice the price point. Again, I think this still wins, but the gap is not as much as the price point would make you believe. So good job, Eastman. I think this guitar punches way above its weight class, as does the smaller body. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you prefer my bourgeois or did you like the Eastman? Let me know. While you're down there, don't forget to check out the brand new acoustic guitar mini course. You can get special pre-order pricing available down below through that link. And once again, the course will never be this discounted ever again. While you're down there, you can also check out some links to the gear that I used to make this video. There's some affiliate links down there, which helps support the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe. We're coming up on half a million subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you so much for getting this channel uh, to this point. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. My name is Rutschall, and remember there is no plan B.